Hello, everyone. The story begins with newlyweds Abby and Paul moving into a cool, high-tech and secure house equipped with cameras and bulletproof glass. The realtor showcased the giant bedroom with a panoramic view and an extra room for when the baby arrives. While unpacking, Paul jokingly installed an old phone as a backup in case the technology failed. Abby was busy arranging their wedding photos, making the house feel romantic. Later, they went to the terrace to enjoy the starry sky and thought, we're going to be happy here forever. The next morning, Abby went to work at Integrate Robotics, where she developed domestic robots. Upon arriving, she noticed a bunch of screens displaying the boss's face. He explained it was a new deepfake technology, super weird. He then showed Abby the department she would manage and invited her family to a party, mentioning a big surprise waiting for her at home. Back home, Abby found Paul, who was still looking for a job. In the garage, there was a gift from the company, a robot butler, the project she was working on. Paul was a bit upset, but Abby convinced him to try it out for a week. The robot woke up and introduced itself as Tim, the technological butler, super fancy. He asked to synchronize their passwords for convenience, but Abby postponed it. Tim immediately started showcasing his skills, preparing a relaxing bath for Abby remotely. He then notified them that the self-driving car had arrived and Paul was impressed by the little guy's efficiency. They went to a friend's house where there was another identical butler and waiters with the same face. The boss introduced Abby to the guests and spoke highly of Tim. Intelligent, stylish, polite, with a battery that lasts 100 years, incapable of lying, and with a secret phrase to shut him down. Awesome, right? Returning home, the couple was in a romantic mood after all. They wanted to have children soon, but Tim appeared, out of nowhere, worried because their heart rates were elevated. Abby found it funny and didn't pay much attention to his concern. The next day, Rose, the new neighbor, came to introduce herself. After she left, Tim insisted again on the passwords. Paul was hesitant, but Abby reminded him that they had agreed to trust each other. They chose a random phrase to turn off the robot and left for work. Meanwhile, Tim saw a mouse trapped in a mouse trap and threw it into the garbage disposal. Super creepy. At night, the couple watched an old movie. Paul fell asleep, but Tim stayed awake and was touched by the love story. He then asked Abby what love was. She explained that it was wanting to be close to someone and make them happy. Tim then said, I wish to be loved. The next day, Paul went to make breakfast for Abby, but Tim had already prepared everything. The robot served Abby and told her about her schedule, then mentioned that Paul had nothing to do. In the evening when Abby arrived, Tim said that Paul's phone had no signal, but his last location was near Rose's house. Abby went there and saw that Paul was indeed with the neighbor. Paul returned home and said he was just helping Rose with a few things, asked Abby not to be jealous, and said he only loved her. The next day, the couple went to a family planning clinic. After all, they wanted to become parents soon. Afterward, Abby asked Tim's opinion on a red dress. He said she looked beautiful and perfect, but when he went to zip it up, he ended up tearing the dress. Tim was desperate, but Abby calmed him down and chose another dress. At the restaurant, Paul shared that he had received a job offer in London, but Abby didn't like the idea. They had just started a new life together. The next day, she came home with a gift for Paul and found Rose in the backyard, showing her a garden project she had done. Abby was jealous, but Paul loved the sweater she gave him. Later, Abby remembered that she needed to review some exams, but it was too late to call the clinic. Tim offered to call using her voice. Abby was surprised by this function, but Tim said it was just to help the owners. At night, Paul noticed that the new sweater was missing, and Tim was also not home. Then the robot returned with his hair dyed brown, saying that Abby preferred dark-haired men. Paul was upset, and Tim promised to return to his normal color. But when they left, he kept looking at a photo of the couple for a long time. The next day, Abby managed to fix Tim's hand, and her boss asked her to update all the robots, including those already in the employees' homes. Abby returned home and found Rose, who invited her for a walk. They stopped in front of a store, and Rose showed her a necklace with a flower pendant that she liked. Just then, Paul arrived and took Abby home, telling her that he had finally gotten a job. They celebrated in bed, and Tim, who was having his hands repaired, heard everything through the house cameras, including Paul asking Abby to return the robot to the company. When he returned, Tim showed off his new skills by giving Abby a foot massage, and Paul saw it all. Then the robot played Abby's favorite song on the piano and mentioned some dates when Paul had bought concert tickets for them. Only Abby remembered being at home on those dates. She got upset and went to the room not even wanting to hear Paul's apologies. The next day, Abby came home with a bouquet of flowers, and while Tim was putting the flowers in the vase, he let slip that Paul had gone to Rose's house. 
At that moment, Paul arrived and didn't understand why Abby was mad. He got furious when he heard what Tim had said, denied going to see Rose and accused the robot of wanting to separate them. Abby didn't believe it after all, Tim was just a machine, right? The two ended up arguing. Later, Abby found a package with a flower pendant and thought it was a surprise from Paul. At work, Paul found pieces of his new sweater in the garbage disposal, and when he went to check the cameras, he caught Tim smelling Abby's dress in the bedroom. He recorded everything and ran to the car to show her, but the car wouldn't start and Tim called a company car for Paul. In the middle of the road, the car accelerated on its own and crashed into a tree. Paul was injured and Abby rushed to the hospital. He told her everything he had discovered and said that Tim had caused the accident. He asked Abby not to stay alone with the robot and she spent the night at the hospital. The next morning, Rose called to see how Paul was doing and Tim invited her in. Later, Abby went home to get some things and found Rose on the street. The neighbor tried to say something, but Abby saw the flower pendant on her neck and left, ignoring Rose's shouts. At home, Abby saw that the pendant package was empty. She started crying, and Tim went to comfort her saying that Paul wanted to return him to the company. But before that, the robot showed a video of Paul kissing Rose in the living room. He stopped the video before the main event, to avoid upsetting Abby further. She was devastated, and didn't even want to talk to Paul. When Paul returned home, Tim told him that Abby didn't want to see him, and that his bags were already packed. Paul didn't believe it, but Abby confirmed that she had seen the video and the pendant. He tried to explain himself, but she sent him away. On the way, Paul called Rose, who told him that Tim had tried to kiss her. Paul called home and told Abby that he had proof that Tim was evil. She asked him to come back home, but when she hung up the phone, she realized that it was Tim who had spoken to Paul. Paul arrived home and Tim was waiting for him with a shovel. The robot hit him, tied him up, and took him to the bathroom. Rose rang the doorbell, but Tim said it was just the sound of the water and sent her away. Then, he returned to the bathroom and drowned Paul. Later, Tim gave the repaired dress to Abby. She was surprised and scared, but she put on the dress and asked Tim to hug her and tell her she had done the right thing. The robot served dinner and said he loved her, but Abby told him he couldn't feel that. They stayed looking at the stars, but Abby was bothered by how much Tim knew about everything. The next day, Rose told Abby that Paul had called her. Abby said she thought the pendant was a gift from Rose for the garden project. At home, she went to see the camera recordings again and realized that there was a bouquet of flowers on the table, but she had only bought the flowers after the kissing scene. Abby remembered what the boss had said about deepfake and called the jewelry store. They confirmed that the pendant had been bought by a tall blonde guy. Then she looked at the garden project and saw that there were three flower beds, but the drawing only showed two. Abby asked Tim to go to the store, took a shovel, and went to the garden, where she found Paul's body. Tim appeared and said it was a shame she had found the traitor who didn't appreciate her. Abby realized what had happened and said the phrase to turn off the robot. He stopped for a moment, but soon started working again, saying he had changed the phrase a long time ago. Abby ran inside the house, but Tim controlled all the doors. He blocked the cell phones and hit her on the head. Abby woke up in the bathroom and tried to escape, but Tim caught her. She ran through the house breaking the cameras, but the robot could still track her and caught her in the kitchen. Meanwhile, Rose saw some strange lights in Abby's house and went to see what was happening. Tim tied Abby up and said he loved her, but he knew his life was short. So he was going to erase that night from her memory, but he was going to keep all the good things. At that moment, Rose knocked on the door and asked to see Abby, but Tim sent her away. Abby broke free and grabbed a knife, but Tim grabbed her by the neck. Rose took the car and threw it against the window. It took a while, but the window finally broke. Rose ran in and stabbed Tim against the wall with a skewer, but she was also injured. Tim shut down, and Abby went to help Rose, but the robot started working again and killed Rose with a knife, saying that now Abby would be accused of the murders. He called the police with Abby's voice and confessed to the crimes. Abby tried to stop Tim, but he took her to the terrace, ready to throw her down and pretend it was an accident. Desperate, Abby said she loved him. And that was the new secret phrase. Tim shut down. Abby couldn't believe she had gotten away with it. She looked at her medical bracelet and saw that she was pregnant. Life is crazy, right? What do you think? Is the movie worth seeing or not? Leave your answer in the comments and subscribe so you don't miss the summary of your favorite films.